So when I first started um, talking to this community, your community, our community, um, one of the things I first brought was water. I started talking a lot about water, and, and I got to say, I carried that work on. That work was sort of passed to me from David Wolf, who started me on that path, and I've been carrying that message for a long time. And it's been a few years for me, and I've got to really, you know, you learn a lot from research and you learn a lot from study, but you learn the most from time and sitting with a thing and meditating on a thing. And I want to share with you what I've learned about water over the years, where I'm at today in uh, my personal development and my understanding. And if I do a good job of this um, talk today, I think you'll understand water in a really new way by the end of it as well. So the name of the talk is Water Shamanism, because we're in this age of science, um, or we think we are, I don't know, we, we're in a left brain scientific mindset. But um, most of the world's been in, in a more of a right brain kind of shamanic mindset. And when you start talking about water and you, you're operating from the chemical mindset, you can easily downplay maybe the most important element in our lives. And I want to talk about water today scientifically, but I also want to talk about it as an element. Does everyone understand what I mean by element? I don't mean... Um, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, 92 elements, periodic table, boring science class, chemistry. I mean element. How many elements are there? Is it four? Is it five? You know, all, the whole world has operated off this idea of elements for a long time. The elements I'm talking about, earth, air, fire, and water. Those are the real elements when you engage with nature. It's easy to forget that when you're living outside of nature. I know it is. So I call this water shamanism because I feel like the goal is that you become a shaman of water. A shaman is somebody who can kind of engage with another layer of reality, like almost what we call the spirit realm, and somebody who carries a teaching with integrity. And if you integrate this message today, then you can kind of carry it out and you can be a steward you can steward the living liquid crystal. That's really the, the matrix of life. That sounds so esoteric. All right, let's get. <clears throat> Here's a question. What is water? We have grown up around such abundant water, we maybe haven't even stopped to think about what it is and how unique it is. You know that in physics, if you're a scientist and you're studying water at any level, water is the big anomalous substance because it doesn't actually even conform to our current laws of physics. It's not even understood. Okay, so what is water? A couple things. Water is a strange and anomalous transparent liquid, a liquid mineral. It's like a stone, but it's a, it's a liquid. It's a liquid mineral. And it defies the generally accepted laws of physics. We see it in all of its phases of energy or all its phases of matter. We talk about you know, states of matter. And I think um, another way to understand states of matter is to say phases of energy. They mean the same thing. But what's unique about water, water is the only substance that you can think of that's natural that you can see in one place on earth as a liquid, solid, and gas all at the same time. You don't run into like, wow, there's some liquid steel and gaseous steel and over there is like some solid steel. You don't see that with salt. You don't see that with... Water is really the only substance we encounter in all three states of matter anywhere. So you can be in a place where I live in Maine, a couple months from now, you can go to a place where there's frozen water on a stream and then there's running water and then there's clouds above you. And look at that, that's three phases of matter all in one place. That's rare and no other substance does that and it's not really understood why it does that. It also has an unusually high specific heat capacity. That's, it's got bit more than any other substance, it resists temperature change. Water's just strange like that. If you've ever taken a, a steel pot and heated it up, you realize it heats up real quick. If you put it on heat, and it cools off real quick. But if you've ever drawn a bath, you notice that the water gets hot. You leave it in the bathtub a couple hours, you come back, it's still warm. Cools real slow. It's one of the unique properties, and in in without that, we wouldn't be alive here, and I'll explain in a bit. Water has this unique property that it, what's it do when it gets cold? Shrinks, shrinks like everything else till it hits a certain temperature, right? Four degrees centigrade, 32 Celsius, it does something totally anomalous. What's it do? Expands. Expands. You ever break a water bottle in your car in the winter? If you use glass bottles, you'll do that from time to time. Or you ever put water in the freezer in a, or any liquid, which is really just water, in glass in the freezer and you can shatter the bottle because it expands. If it didn't do that, there'd be no life on earth and we'll talk about that as well. That's, it's really what 
if you imagine if water just got smaller, smaller, smaller like other substances when it gets cold, then all the ice would end up where in a lake? The bottom. And then it would freeze its way to the top, and there would be no more fish. What happens is it actually, the, water, the cold water sinks, 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 and when it freezes, it floats to the surface. And then it insulates the water in the lake, and that's what allows fish to live. That's a unique property. It's not really understood why it does that. It's the universal solvent. It's the solvent all life forms use. In other words, you're made of, and every other life form you know about is. And do we know any exceptions to that? No. Maybe life is water. Maybe each one of us is just a different expression of water. Water has an absolutely unusual surface tension. And the weirdest thing about water to me is it's the only only inorganic liquid in the world that we don't manufacture. We've learned in science how to make some liquids, but check this out. All the liquids that you'll ever encounter in nature, are, it's just water. The only liquids that are exceptions to that are made by organisms that are made of water. So if a sugar ferments, you can get liquid alcohol, but that was really made by things that were made of water. Or you can get olive oil. Olive oil is like a liquid, but it's just made by olives, and olives are made of But aside from that, in the natural world, you don't encounter puddles of anything. You know that every substance here on Earth is either a solid or a gas. You know that whole idea of flowing like water? You heard Bruce Lee's final interview? Anyone heard that before Bruce Lee passed on? He kind of left a really awesome interview where he's like, you must learn to flow like water. <laughs> And the reason he's saying that, we don't say flow like other things. We talk about water because water is the only thing that knows how to flow. Everything else is either locked up as a solid or gone into the atmosphere as a gas. Water is a very unique, unique substance. So there's this really interesting question, where's water come from? Because most of the water that's here on the earth has been here a really long time. And we're not even sure why it's here because it's hard to find it in concentrations on other planets. And so we know we're on a pretty unique planet from what we can see, and we're not even really sure where the water came from. I have some ideas about where it came from. But I'm going to get on the Bible verse thing again here. This is right in the beginning of the Bible. So this is verse number two. What's verse number one? Anyone know? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, here's verse two, second most important part of the whole thing. And the earth was without form and void. In other words, the earth was like nothing. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. All there is is darkness, emptiness, and void. Then the face, oh, sorry, then the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So there's no light, and there's no earth. There's just God and water. That's the, the Christian mythology says that the first matter was water. By the way, it's not just the Christians. You can go around the world and talk to people, and they'll tell you the first substance in all these traditional cultures. First substance was water. Water is the source. The word for spring in French is what? Source. So that's, that's from the Bible. Here's from science. After molecular hydrogen and carbon monoxide, water is the most abundant molecule in the universe. In the universe. It's also the most abundant solid substance in space. Think about that for a moment, please. If I said, what's the most abundant solid substance in space? You might think, well, planets. Rock of some, it's water, ice. It's the most abundant solid substance in the universe. Wow. Maybe it's not that rare. Maybe it's everywhere. So water is actually, and this is really interesting, water is burned hydrogen. Water is actually like an ash. You ever burned wood before? And you end up with ashes at the end. You burn hydrogen gas, guess what you end up with? Water. Wait, everybody. You burn hydrogen gas, what do you end up with? Water. Yeah, that's why, um, that's that idea of the hydrogen fuel cell car. What's the byproduct of burning hydrogen in a car? What comes out the tailpipe? Water. New water. Water is burned hydrogen. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. 90% of the atoms of the whole universe, 90% of the known universe is made of hydrogen. And then what's the most abundant solid? Which is actually hydrogen. Now, 70% of our sun, I know this may seem like some, we're going to get off the chemistry in a second here, but 70% of the sun, where all the light's coming from, 70% is hydrogen. 70% of the sun is hydrogen. Do you know what 60% of the earth is made of? Oxygen. 
60% of our planet is oxygen. Think about this. If the sun is made of hydrogen and the earth is made of oxygen, and anything the ancients told us about male and female dynamics is true, what is the union of the sun and the earth mate? See, all day long, what's coming out of the sun, the sun's made out of plasma, it's plasma state hydrogen. And what's happening is that hydrogen is blasting out as what we call the solar wind. You've heard of that? You've heard about solar storms and sunspots, right? And the emissions that come from the sun. All day long, the sun is blasting out hydrogen and it's hitting an earth made out of oxygen. And to protect us, we have a magnet for an earth and the hydrogen ions blast into this wall and it moves and, and that wall is made of a lot of ozone, which is oxygen. And what happens is it directs it around. It's possible that in that process, the lovemaking between the sun and the earth, father, son, mother, earth, it's possible that the child they produce might be water. It's possible that the reason that so much water accumulates at the poles as huge crystalline ice structures is because in that process, that water that's being formed comes and rains down in the poles. Does that make sense? It's like a union of opposites. It's really beautiful. Water is hydrogen. That's why hydro means what? In Genesis, to produce. Hydrogen means produces water. Produces water. Water is the ashes of hydrogen. By the way, I want to talk about a really dangerous chemical. And you guys might not know how important it is that we need to really get on banning dihydrogen monoxide. It's the invisible killer, DHMO. Dihydrogen monoxide kills people every year of acute inhalation. People breathe this stuff in and they die. Anyone know what dihydrogen monoxide is? Yeah. People do die every year of drowning. That is acute inhalation. Laugh, that's a joke, come on. Di dihydrogen monoxide, it's funny we don't think of water in that way, but if we think about water as dihydrogen monoxide, in other words, di means what? Two, and hydrogen, and then mono means? So it means two hydrogen, one oxygen, right? That's what water is. If you take two hydrogen and you burn them, what do you get? Okay, who remembers this? What is that? The Hindenburg explosion, do you know, at that time they were filling blimps with what kind of gas? Hydrogen. Okay, now, use the science we just went over. When that thing blew up, it was full of hydrogen. That hydrogen reacted with oxygen, that's what burning is. When the Hindenburg exploded, what was formed? New virgin water. Most of the water on this planet's been here since the formation of the Earth. They're new virgin, brand new, first formed, baby, infantile, immature water molecules were formed and rained down from the sky. Isn't that amazing? What about that one? Remember Chris McCall from the Challenger explosion? When the Challenger space shuttle exploded, it was hydrogen gas, and what happened was new water was formed. It's really interesting. Water is burned hydrogen, and hydrogen's what the universe is made of. In other words, the entire universe, 90% of the atoms in the universe, are water in another form. It's water that hasn't burned yet. Is that interesting? Is that interesting? I think that's really interesting. Water is really unique as a substance because, you know, it's only a liquid in a really narrow range of temperatures. We talked about how difficult it is for other substances to be a liquid at all. Most substances want to be a solid or a gas. It's hard to get one to be a liquid. Water is only a liquid between zero degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius, right? Below zero, it's, and above 100, it's, it's gas, it's steam. So really, for there to be liquid water on the earth, do you see how small the temperature range that the earth must occupy is? Because in space terms, we have stuff from almost absolute zero, where all molecules are so cold they almost stop moving, all the way up to the temperature of stars. Zero to 100 Celsius is like a little tiny, narrow temperature range, but we just happen to live in exactly the right place. 